someone that I was working with one time, they asked her, Hey, um, what is a remote job that I can get with no skills? And she was like, um, sell drugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know that. I mean, you need to have some skills. That is number one. There's different types of skills. It can be entry level skills. You can start out with data entry, copywriting, proofreading. You can find jobs that, of course, are not going to pay as much as jobs that would require more technical skills. So, so yeah, you can definitely get started with learning entry level skills. Welcome to our special bonus episodes where we catch up with our past guests to see how they have pivoted their lifestyles and businesses to deal with our new normal of self-quarantining. In these episodes, you will hear how remote entrepreneurs and location-independent workers are dealing with the current situation in order to thrive in an uncertain time. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some major knowledge bombs. Hey friend, have you been feeling overwhelmed looking for the right online job? Maybe you don't have enough remote skills or maybe you have no idea how to create a killer resume that will help you stand out from the crowd. I've learned that having a community of people supporting you through this process can be the deciding factor whether you make it or break it. That's why I am so excited to share that this September, we will be opening up our doors to our remote skills membership, where we teach you incredible techniques that will help you land online gigs by learning from leading experts every single month. Our membership will provide you with the skills you need and accountability partners that will help you succeed. For more information, visit LearnRemoteSkills.com. Dot com. Again, that's learnremoteskills.com. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to be talking to Andrea again. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Debbie. This is cool. We meet again <laughs> over the computer. <laughs> I know, virtually this time, but I'm glad the yeah. last time it was in person. So... <laughs> Yes, we need to to definitely try and do one of those in-person meetings once all this is over. But for now, Zoom and video chats and video calls like most of the world. <laughs> exactly. I know I, I was telling everybody this. I'm like, once this is all over, everyone is getting a hug from me because <laughs> we're all like, stay away from me. Get away from me. Go away. Yeah. Stay six feet away. So you're really interesting, Andre. Before we get to everything, all the tips that you're going to give us, can you reintroduce yourself again and what you do? Yes. So I'm a remote work specialist. I basically create a lot of tools and resources to help people land their first remote jobs. And I have some free tools and services that I provide, like a remote job directory. People can go on there and it's updated every week with new legit jobs that they can apply to. And then I also have paid services. For example, I revamp people's resumes and I completely remotify them so that they can have their remote experiences, tools, and skills highlighted, some of them that they might not even know they have. And then I also offer courses, workshops, and things like that. Everything to help people get started in this remote work journey. Well, all of that is super helpful right now because we can't do anything else except remotely. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone who has been working remotely already for some time has been like, okay, there's not a lot of new things going on for me. This is what I usually do. That doesn't mean that everyone that has been working remotely has been able to keep their jobs because some people work in industries that have been affected, like travel, for example. So I've known people who have worked, who have been working remotely, but have still lost their jobs. But a lot of people, thankfully, who were already working remotely have been able to keep their jobs and to also just find ways to make it all sustainable and to make it all work with the new different changes and situations we're dealing with. It's also interesting because there's a lot of people with jobs that they didn't think it could be remote and now it can actually be remote. And that's really interesting because a lot of times we kind of like our jobs already and we just 
you know, don't have a boss or maybe a company that will allow us to do it. And now they're forced to. So that's a really interesting time. So maybe they can actually negotiate that even after yeah. this is over, if they actually do like working remotely. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, working remotely is not for everyone because some people just don't like it. Some people like being out and about and interacting with people going to the office. I don't know. They like that collaboration feel. But for whoever is now realizing that working remotely is doable and that they like it, that they feel good doing it, that they like being in control of their time, then yeah, a lot of people are going to definitely find ways to now talk to their bosses and be like, hey, how can we you know, you know, do this work from home at least? <laughs> Another thing that I've been telling people for, for a while is that they think that remote work is only for a certain industries or for a certain, a certain niche or for certain types of jobs. But truth is that, I mean, accountants don't usually think that they can be remote because they're like, oh, this is not really a creative type of like job that requires for me to be out there and do social media and all of that. But now I'm realizing I can do it from anywhere. So yeah, a lot of people, if they learn skills and then tools that can help them do their work remotely, there's so many things that you can do online. So have you found that there's way more remote gigs now that are actually open? Or do you find that there's just not enough for everybody because there's so many people out there looking? Yeah, so at the beginning, when this just started, I noticed that there were a lot of remote jobs that were already open and that there were there were still up on a lot of career sites and a lot of like the, the career page of each company, but they had paused hiring because of course they were trying to adapt and adjust to this whole thing and they hadn't taken the, the postings down. Mm. So uh, hiring and growth is not priority for a lot of companies right now. They're just trying to keep their current employees and navigate this whole thing. So a lot of companies at first had postings that were not really, really, you know, available at the moment. But now... A lot of companies are adapting and there's been, according to LinkedIn, these are not my numbers, I don't make up stats. <laughs> um, so according to LinkedIn, the postings have been, no, applications have gone up 400%. Wow. And then the job postings have gone up 28%. Mm -hmm. Of course, that means there's a lot of competition, but there's also more jobs, remote jobs being created. So anyone that has already been working remotely or has some sort of experience or already knows some skills is going to have a big advantage because now there's people, all kinds of people who have never worked remotely applying. So now it's a, it's a great time to, if you already have the slightest experience or tool, know some tools or you know some skills, go for it because I mean, there are going to be more remote jobs popping up. So as you were saying, there's a lot more people, 400%. That's a huge jump. That's crazy, yes. right? But obviously that's going to get lower once this is Correct. all over, but we don't know when that's going to happen. When you are somebody that has no experience, like most of your audience, you're trying to help, how yes. can they actually stand out, especially once they start handing in their resume? Because now there's a ton of people you're going to be in competition with. Correct. So the first thing is to make sure that you have skills. So, so one person asked uh, of someone that I was working with one time, they asked her, hey, um, what is a remote job that I can get with no skills? And she was like, um, sell drugs? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. That, I mean, you need to have some skills. That is number one. And there's different types of skills. It can be entry-level skills. You know, you can start out with data entry, copywriting, proofreading. You can find jobs that, of course, are not going to pay as much as jobs that would require more technical skills. So, so yeah, you can definitely get started with learning entry level skills and you can do that with little courses on Udemy. Those are like $10 and they'll take you two weekends to learn and slowly you can do that until you 
have a bunch of remote skills that you can add to your resume, but then you also need a little bit of experience. So what you do with this uh, this time is that you either go and apply for entry level jobs. Of course, I mean it's like in the real world. You don't start out with a super high paying job like the dream job. No, you might have to start you know small and grow from there. Learn more skills and go up the ladder. So same thing with remote jobs. You might have to start small. Other things that you can do is that there are remote internships popping up, so you can do that. You can also do pro bono work. So, Mm -hmm. for example, uh, one person that took one of my workshops in December, he sent me, uh, so, so they get a recording of my workshops, right? So what he did is he grabbed this video and he edited in edited the the workshop into a one minute highlight reel, and he's like, "Hey, by the way, I made this for you. You can use it for your marketing purposes for your next workshop. I edit videos, so if you ever need another one, go ahead and reach out." And I was like, "Okay, that is the kind of hustle we're talking about because now I know what he's able to do. He did it for free. I loved it, and now I'm going to have him." very present in my mind whenever I need uh, some sort of thing edited. So yeah, there's the kinds of things that you can do, get creative and offer samples of work for free to someone that you'd like to work with. And then eventually you can land a job with them. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of options to gain experience. I love when people take initiative like that because it definitely, like you said, it sticks out in your mind and it makes them look so much better, especially when you have like hundreds of applicants and this one person went above and beyond probably more than like 99% of people who are, you're literally just seeing a piece of paper and you don't know what they technically can do because there's been a lot of people that I've seen that looks really great on paper and then you interview them and you ask them for a sample work and they don't know what on earth you're talking about. So that's definitely a great tip to stand out for sure. And the thing is, there's not many people who will do that either. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying work for free forever, or you know, give away all your 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 time and energy and talent. But if you can provide little samples of work like that for a few of your dream clients or people that you'd like to work with, I mean, one of them um, will 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 notice and will probably hire you for a project or for something ongoing. But you just gotta try. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe they'll introduce you to somebody who will need those skills, who will need you, and you just never know what's going to happen. Also, another thing that I wanted to touch up on is that a lot of people also don't think that they have the skills to be a remote worker. And it's kind of crazy because if you know how to answer emails, if you're a really good organizer, all of those things, you already have remote skills, things that you even do for like your family and friends for yourself. So just think outside of the box. And I'm sure 90% of people will have those types of skills. Yeah. One of the most common feelings that people get after they complete my workshops is, wow, I didn't know I had remote skills, (laughs) but you pointed them out, you listed out some options. And now I'm like, oh, I do have some because Pretty much everyone, like you said, is going to have skills that are transferable from their normal jobs and what they usually do to the remote world because it's just a matter of doing the same thing that you do, but doing it in a computer, doing it with maybe learning a few different tools, maybe, you know, learning some uh, uh, different software that you're not used to, but you'll basically do the same thing, but online. And yeah, people are, are scared. They don't know where to start. It can be a little bit challenging because of course it's all overwhelming if you've never done it before, but, but yeah, it, it's not as scary as it seems. <laughs> and a, a lot of people definitely have the entry level level skills, uh, like you said, emailing and, you know, collaborating, communicating with people online is half of the battle in in a remote job. And uh, people who have those kinds of skills can definitely land customer service, customer support jobs. And there's tons of those out there. You also don't need a degree. That's something else that scares people. They're like, oh, but I don't have a degree in whatever. And I'm like, you do not need one. I got my brother who is a college student. He still hasn't finished. I got him a customer support remote job. So, I mean, you can be young, you don't need a degree. As long as you are 
a little bit tech savvy and you're willing to get a little bit creative and try new things online, you can probably do it. Yeah. Those are really great reminders because I think we have so many fears that, oh, and excuses too. I think we just pile up so much excuses for ourselves that we end up not doing anything. And I tell people this all the time, just take one step, just do one thing, even if it scares you, you know, take baby steps. But honestly, now you have no choice. You have to do this. Okay. (laughs) Otherwise, who's going to pay your rent and your food? Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's the perfect time for people to realize that this is not only a fancy lifestyle in which we get to travel and see the world while working, which is how we like to portray it a lot of the times <laughs> on social media, right? Um, but that's just a little part of it. Like the truth is that we're actually working most of the times from home, from our couch, from a little home office or from a Starbucks or for something, you know, from somewhere small. And doing that is what allows us to have flexibility, have time to work on different kinds of projects. So another thing that really scares people is that they think that they're not going to have stability mm-hmm. or they think that they're not going to be able to find, you know, like the security they have in a full-time job, you know, a regular office, nine to five. But I always say, you can be fired from your nine to five full-time job tomorrow And I mean, same thing can happen remotely, but usually what happens with people who work remotely is that they have a little bit more flexibility and time and control of their, you know, schedules. So they're able to work on side projects, side hustles. They have more time to do little online gigs. And that way they can get to a point where they have multiple sources of income, which is eventually what's going to save you from not going broke whenever you're under a hard circumstance is having multiple sources of income. Because if you lose one job or one project or one client, you're still going to have three, four or five more. So that is what right now a lot of people are realizing. They're like, oh, I just lost my job because of the situation we're going through right now. And now a lot of remote workers are okay because we have more than one thing going on. So don't think that you won't have the stability just because it's a remote job. It actually gives you more opportunity to, you know, find more more sources of income and more projects to work on. And aside from that, there's also a lot of full-time jobs out there that are not available for citizens of all countries. (laughs) I am going to say that, but there are a lot of jobs that offer benefits and, you know, medical dental insurance and 401k and the whole nine yards. So don't think that remote jobs are just freelance are just like little clients here and there. It can be a full-time job with benefits. (laughs) When you say that, it's kind of funny to me that people are afraid of that because now, like you said, those full-time jobs, a lot of people are losing them, you know? And I think freelancers, remote workers, people who are out of the box thinkers are more able to create different and more stable sources of income, like you said, because they do have a lot of different options and it's not just one thing. So and most people who do have a day job, there's just one thing. And then once you lose that, that's actually a lot less stable than what we we do here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And people don't realize that. So yeah, that's, that's definitely something not to be afraid of. You, you can be stable and you can have a good source uh, of, of income, um, a good income. So a lot of people are like, did you make more money now or before <laughs> when you have, when you had a nine to five? And I'm like, actually now. And people are like, no way, mind blown. And yeah, because right now I have 700 different things going on, not just one paycheck. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's what really surprises a lot of people. Another thing I wanted to talk about is how everybody thought like we you had mentioned this a little bit, how this is so glamorous, right? And that, you know, we don't do a lot of hard work. It's just, you know, posting stuff online and working here and there. And then they actually realize how hard this is because there's so many distractions when you're at home, even when this the coronavirus is not here yet, when you're traveling all the time there's so much distraction and then sometimes you don't know when to stop either so it definitely takes a lot of practice and self-discipline to be 
able to do this. So it's kind of nice that people are understanding where we're coming from because it's not as easy as you all think. And I love that so many people are realizing this now and they're not making fun anymore. They're like, oh my God, this is so much harder than I thought, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. And a, a lot of people that start out as when we have our little like companies starting and we're self-employed, we are wearing all the hats, you know, we're doing everything in our little companies from social media promotion, marketing to outreach and customer support to actually doing or providing a service and all of those things. So we have to get creative and there's a lot of work to do. And I'm kind of a workaholic because I love what I do. But if I didn't have that self-discipline to be like, okay, laptop closed, time to get away from the computer. You know, those are little things that you don't realize that you need if you're in a nine to five job, because in a, in a nine to five job, you just leave the office and that's it. You can turn the work phone off or, you know, get completely away and that's it. But yeah, when, when you work from home, sometimes you really don't have that limit of like, okay, when to stop working <laughs> or you don't have that just willpower to be like, okay, son, daughter, cat, please <laughs> go away. We, I am working. I am going to stay in this room just because I'm home doesn't mean that I am free and that I can go out to the living room and chat with you. It also doesn't mean that I can turn on Netflix and binge watch a show at 2 p.m. because I'm home. No, I'm working. So yeah, a lot of people are like, okay, no, I believe you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> You feel like, you know, like, thank God now people actually, they know, they know, they know the <laughs> truth. <laughs> yes, they know the truth. They know we work and they know that the photos on social media aren't what we do every day. Like a few of my photos recently have been like beach photos. And I'm like, I'm not, I mean, I'm still going to post my beach photos. We all know in the Instagram <laughs> stories, what goes down is just me here. <laughs> On your couch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On right your here, chair. Right <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so let's move forward to when somebody actually gets a call back because their resume stood out, you know, because Andrea gave you such great tips. <laughs> now, how do you ace the virtual interview? Because that's honestly, I think it's more nerve wracking for people because now it's face to face, like yeah. virtual face to face. Yeah. And it takes some practice to be able to do that. What are your tips for somebody who has never done this before or, you know, they don't know how to stand out with that as well? Yeah. So there are some really basic things that people don't even take into consideration when doing a virtual job. And one thing is like, you have to be early. You have to be on time. <laughs> People, I, I, I used to work. Uh, my first remote job was recruiting and hiring candidates and interview them, screening them via video calls. And you have no idea how many times people didn't show up on time. And then they would send me an email 20 minutes later, like, hey, I'm running late. Or I didn't know, uh, like, the, the software wasn't working for me or my computer wasn't charged. And I'm like, no, 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 you're out. I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't have the preparation skills and organization skills to make sure that all of these things are running and working beforehand, then I am very scared of what will happen whenever you get the job because I'm never going to meet you in person. So <laughs> people need to realize that this is their chance to seem like a reliable and professional human being. Like we don't even really know if you exist or if you're really good on camera, but that's your chance to shine, right? So very basic things like being on time, making sure that you check your software, your camera, your audio, your microphone, and everything before you show up to the interview. I know a lot of people are, are doing these interviews from home or whatever, but if your dog is barking the whole interview right next to you, <laughs> that is also something to consider and be like, if this person has a video call with a client, 
that is how they're going to show up. Because mm. I mean, if they didn't care enough to, you know, make this a little bit more presentable for their interview, can you imagine later when they get comfortable how they're going to be with a client? So little things like that. Like a lot of people have kids, but make sure that you talk to someone, that they're napping, that they're in another room, something like just get ready for little things like that. Um, of course, there are things that are unexpected, and most of the times, you know, uh, interviewers and employers will be completely understanding. But if it's something that seems like you just did not prepare, then that would would not set you apart. And basic things like having good audio, having good lighting. I, you have no idea how many times I've interviewed people, and they're they're, they're like this, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> like literally showing me their forehead only. And I'm like, um, can you please fix your camera? Like that they not check this. So yeah. all of those things show the little like attention to detail that these people are going to have. So, so make sure that you seem presentable, reliable, that you seem like you have attention to detail. And then in terms of the interview, if you've ever done an interview in person, it's kind of like the same thing. They're going to be nerve wracking, but just try to be your most normal self. Like in person, you sort of keep it maybe super professional and all of that. But in an interview via a video call, I would say like relax a little bit, you know, like your personality can shine through. Like we want to know that the person that we're going to be working with is going to have a good attitude, that they're real, normal, relatable. Like those things are cool to know too. And also your attire, your attire shoot, like, if you are going to have a video call, don't wear a tube top where it seems <laughs> like if you hold a thing like this, that you're naked. Like I've seen that too. And I'm like, hmm, they didn't think this through. So, you know, more little examples of things that show that you have attention to detail, just basic things. So yeah, I would start with that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the funny thing. If you look like that, if you even, it, they're not even going to be listening to you anymore. All they see is like either your forehead or you look half naked or the background noise. That's all they're noticing. They're not even paying attention, even if you do have the skills. Yes, yes. One time I also interviewed a person and the background was featuring a device to to smoke things. <laughs> and I'm like, Wow, they they they're not noticing, or they think this is like totally normal. So yeah, just also be aware of your background. Like, don't interview in a messy room. Don't interview with illegal things <laughs> behind you. Like you know, tell people that are that live with you to go away, or if you're in a coffee shop or whatever, find a area that is as quiet as possible. And then make sure that you're trying to do it like the background will be like something, you know, not as busy, not like the area where everyone is going to be walking by. If, if you're at a coffee shop, don't sit next to the blender where they're going to be making frappuccinos all day, you know, so little things like that to, to be aware of. Yeah. Like you said, the little attention to details really matter. Can I also say that? So I've had a few businesses already and I've had my share of interviewing and in my other jobs too, I did a lot of interviewing. So there was one that was hilarious. This person sent their resume in and also make sure that you check what you have on your social media because the businesses yes. check that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we checked her social media and on her, on her image, like it's the banner of her social media was her naked underneath a table with a gun and marijuana on top of like a clear table and she's underneath <laughs> so she was hitting all the controversial things that yeah. you could ever hit like <laughs> mood drugs guns weapons, yeah. violence, like everything and uh, no yes people need to be really careful like uh, employers are 100 percent going to stalk you yeah everywhere we do like <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely me too like sometimes like even for like they read your resume they look at everything they're like okay this might sound like a good candidate they go to your social media before they ever contact you or get you in front of the camera so the first thing that's going to show up on social media is rant <laughs> because someone stole your parking spot somewhere and you're like this person la, da, da, da. i'm like whoa this is scary because <laughs> 
this this person is violent and gets re really angry really easily. So all those little things are little pointers that, you know, the red flags basically for an employer. So make sure that you check every single social media site. If it's not private, you should be checking it. No. So Instagram, LinkedIn, everything, like even Twitter, your Twitter, if you Google your name, your Twitter is one of the first things that's going to show up. So if your 2008 tweets are <laughs> questionable, make sure they're off, <laughs> delete them. So yeah, very careful. It's, it's funny because most people don't think about that. You know, when it's online, it's going to live there. Even when you yeah. delete it, like people, who knows, they may have screenshotted it or it's living yeah. in another platform. It's pretty crazy. So be careful what you're sharing, especially if you want to be employable, because we definitely just throw those resumes in the bin if, if you're showing us all of those things. 100%. Yes. <laughs> like, like, don't forget Pinterest. If you are pinning questionable things on your Pinterest, we'll see them too. So yeah, don't underestimate the power of social media and the internet will find your questionable things. Yeah. It's like being detectives when you're hiring yeah. somebody, you're just, you just become this like detective, like a really good one. Yes, absolutely. Because I mean, think about it for the person that wants to be hired, they're thinking like, is this job going to be legit? Are they going to pay me on time? Is this company real? All of those things. But for the employer, they're also thinking, is this person going to show up? Is this person not going to disappear? You know, is this, this person have a shady living situation that's going to affect how we present ourselves to a clients? So yeah, just like an employer is thinking these things, you're also thinking them. You just have to make sure that your stuff is on point. Yeah. So don't, don't take for granted those little things that you do. They all yeah. matter. Oh my yeah. gosh. Do they ever? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, absolutely. Thank you so much, Andrea, for giving us all of these tips. If our listeners want to know more about you, where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me on itsatravelod.com. That is my main website where you find, you'll find tips, blogs, and all of that. But also, I think one of my most popular resources is my free remote job directory that gets updated every week with legit jobs. I am also It's a Travel OD on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. On Instagram, I post daily. There's tips, free resources. I'm coming up with a course very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, my goal is to help people land their first remote job. So whether you follow me on Instagram and check out my free little tips and freebies and all those cool stuff, or your work with me more one-on-one, -on -one, I, I want to make sure to be able to provide that confidence that people need to find remote jobs and, and do this whole thing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Andrea. And she has so many amazing and free resources already, even just on her Instagram. So, And her website is great because she has all of those resources there as well. Thank you so much, Andrea. We really appreciate you so much. Thank you, Debbie. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, friend, are you looking to land a remote gig ASAP? Well, did you know that we not only have a ton of online jobs you can apply to on our site, but now we are also sending them straight to your inbox. I'm happy to announce that we will be sending our email subscribers legit online jobs every Wednesday. We have done hours of research so you don't have to. If you want to be the first one to hear about the remote gigs we find, go to theoffbeatlife.com to subscribe. Thanks so much for listening to this special bonus episode. To hear our full episodes, make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com.